welcome to uh, video seven about the risks and the risk mitigation, risk management that we have in place to manage those risks for you. Um, so we're going to take you through a cycle. Uh, a cycle is uh, the starting of your RANDs in your Investec bank account, uh, the payment of those RANDs to your uh, New York dollar uh, bank account, which is in the name of stewards. Uh, and that firstly creates FX risk, right? Because you're reporting in RANDs uh, and you now hold dollars. So to the extent that the dollar that you hold uh, becomes less valuable while you're holding those dollars, you're exposed to FX risk. How we mitigate that is we trade as fast as we can back into RANDs to limit the amount of time that you are allocated to uh, uh, RAND dollar risk. Um, you will imagine that if you are long dollars uh, against RANDs for one second, uh, the potential volatility is very different to one week or one year. So we typically, within a day or two, bring you back into RANDs uh, and we have uh, effectively minimized that FX risk uh, effectively in the past. Um, the second thing is now your uh, market risk. So when your funds land offshore, we would buy a up to 10% of your AUM in digital assets as the uh, float that we would use to buy and sell instantaneously. So of $100 at any given time, a maximum of 10 um, would be uh, allocated to your Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, uh, digital asset, crypto asset, whatever you want to call it. Now, um, we've set it at that maximum 10%, which has historically proven to be uh, profitable um, over the three-year uh, test period and uh, our own trading of the system. And since November, when this was put into a, a discretionary mandate um, uh, format, um, this system of minimizing the market risk at 10% has proven efficient because the arbitrage profit has outweighed any potential loss that you've had on the crypto market risk side. Thirdly, when your that, money... Um, yeah, so obviously we get those two types of risks um, and the software goes a long way to mitigate against these from, from two perspectives. So one is the asset allocation. So the software is programmed to only expose you to a certain amount of uh, risk across various assets. And then secondly, the efficiency and speed of the fund transfer. And again, this happens 24 hours a day, um, effectively seven days a week, um, far beyond the capacity of any one individual. And that's really the, the, the value that the software brings to mitigate against that FX and crypto risk that you've explained. It's very important, Graham. And, and so the software is a great tool in terms of us managing these risks most efficiently. Um, we then have uh, counterparty risk um, because the, the assets are now sitting in the name of stewards and stewards is um, a licensed uh, asset manager in South Africa and internationally via Mauritius. Um, so you are handing over the control of your assets to a regulated business whose job it is to control this money. We are regulated by the FSC in Mauritius and the FSCA in South Africa. We have reviews from the regulators. Uh, we are audited uh, and we uh, use Investec Bank uh, as your main banker who will be uh, holding your RANDs in custody when they send to you. So you can rely on the counterparty risk of stewards and Investec um, as well as the exchanges where your money is trading uh, out of the wide sea of potential digital asset exchanges out there. Our team uses our um, uh, qualifying criteria, criteria to uh, allocate to only the best exchanges which have got strong controls, uh, strong processes, um, and they then vet us as well uh, to give us API keys to be able to trade at a high level on that particular exchange. Um, Again, I think that's where you know, the fact that we are managing significant funds gives us the opportunity to meet with the exchanges and our counterparties uh, in a way that is perhaps beyond an individual. Uh, so we've been through extensive due diligence processes to um, identify your, your most reputable, most secure exchanges uh, and banking partners. Obviously nothing is foolproof, but I think we've gone a long way 
to, to, to mitigating against a lot of the uh, potential counterparty risks that we could encounter. Fantastic, yeah. Um, then Graham talked earlier on about the software and how it manages everything for us, but the software also brings with itself its own risks. And you may have uh, done some research about algorithmic trading failures, uh, minus one times minus one becomes a plus one somewhere in a formula and it creates a problem. Um, so how we mitigate that is number one, we've traded 1.6 billion rands uh, of volume to make sure that this is effectively doing what we say it will do. And we're very confident about that. And the second thing is we keep humans involved in the process. So every uh, process has an SLA, uh, service level agreement. And if that SLA is breached, so if something was supposed to happen 30 seconds and it takes 35 seconds, or a trade does not settle or a warning comes up, that is escalated 24 seven to a member of the support team of the software or the dev. Uh, and the software will even phone a human being to say at this time, there's an issue, wake up and solve that problem. And that is escalated all the way up to the CEO of uh, the, the, the software team or myself on the investment team to, to fix um, an issue that is coming up. Um, we have had issues and bugs in the past, but those have not been loss making issues, but rather issues of um, a particular exchange changed the way they reference a Bitcoin from BTC to XBT uh, and a code then didn't instruct something. And we then had to go and update code to ensure that that trading actually happens efficiently. Um, but that only slowed down a profit. It never created a loss. Um, you then have uh, the hacker risk. So whenever dealing with anything software related, even your, 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 your bank account, your online accounts, there's always a risk of being hacked. We use ethical hackers to test our firewalls and our protection. And we've recently passed our um, ethical hack test. Um, and the last risk is the regulatory risk uh, in that um, the investor is making payments that need to stay within the rules of the Saab and SARS. Uh, and we guide you through that with the forms um, to ensure that everything that we've done is legal. Um, so those are the main risks. Uh, which are all well mitigated. Below. Um, I think it's also worth raising um, stewards as a financial services provider. Once again, you, you, you do have recourse uh, in the event that you, you feel that you've been unfairly treated as an investor, whether that be to the uh, FSCA or the Ombudsman. Um, I, I think that goes a long way to um, providing that additional security to clients, knowing that they are facing a, a licensed financial services provider. Mm. Exactly, Graham. And just as well highlighted, uh, on our fact sheet, you'll see that our independent compliance officer is also available. Um, so any issues you would like to raise, um, those are on the fact sheet, the contact details of Louis party, uh, who you can get all of um, to discuss any compliance issues as well. So those are the key risks. And um, we believe they've been well mitigated. Uh, but with any uh, investment that has a good return, uh, there are risks, uh, they are controlled and managed. Um, thank you for listening.